So I just got home uh, after my Steely Dan rainy weather tour of uh, my, uh, how I get home from work uh, going through the city. Um, and now I'm going to take you on a rainy ass garden tour because I'm a glutton for punishment. Let's see how long I can stand it. So this is my, uh, my big Viking bed so far. Um, new things to be planted. This is the Lady of Shalott rose that I mentioned. Um, I've got a geranium that I got at a uh, Home Depot or the Home Despot. Um, and uh, I've just been deadheading it. It's still in the pot that it came in. Um, but I've got um, these guys. Um, this is uh, American Beauty Berry, which I will append uh, a picture of what the shrub will look like. Um, but I got these uh, I nicked cuttings <laughs> at a community garden a couple or like sometime in October or something like that. And uh, they they've taken and they're sprouting new growth. And hopefully I'll get to put that out. Um, I'm thinking in the front because uh, it'll be really pretty for the neighbors to see. And maybe it'll obstruct from the house and make me look like I know what I'm doing. Um, I've got um, see you got. My scabiosa is kind of done for the season. Uh, and I've got, I've got a bunch of stuff coming up that I don't know what it is. So we'll find out later. Um, like my daffodils have kind of, they're all spent. Uh, this is Veronica. Again, I'll append the picture of what the final product kind of looks like. Um, I've got Forsythia getting leaves. Uh, it already flowered because um, that's uh, forsythia is one of the first things to flower in springtime. I've got, um, I don't know if, yeah, I can barely see anything, but this is my wisteria. This is American wisteria, um, which blooms later than the stuff that I took video of. Um, the stuff that I took video of is Japanese wisteria, which has just taken over. Um, and it usually blooms first. It blooms before uh, the American one. Um, this is one of my favorite flowers in the whole wide world. This is uh, Aqualegia, um, colloquially known as Columbine. It's the state flower of Colorado. Um, and my boss Rick uh, told me that apparently it's illegal to cut it um, in Colorado, which is a damn shame because you get more flowers if you do. Um, but I, uh, I got it. Uh, again at the home desk spot and uh, I planted it came with two plants so I've got one little baby one there and then the bigger guy over here um, this is uh, a cardoon uh, which is uh, an artichoke it's, um, and uh, it will shoot up a giant flower in the middle uh, eventually um, I did get uh, a witch hazel for or, uh, for Christmas um, and it's got, yeah, its flowers are pretty spent. Again, it's also another, um, early bloomer. Ooh, there's a little spider in the middle. Well, the camera can't focus on things that tiny. Um, but if you can see, it gets these like little yellow fringy flowers. Focus on the moving thing. There you go. But yeah, um, so she's very pretty and smells wonderful. Um, yeah, here's what I've been working on. Focus, focus, you fuck. Thank you. Um, so I got my uh, my delphiniums blooming, almost blooming. Um, got one one tiny tiny little bud, or from the box gloves but I got a couple more things coming up um and then behind um uh miss uh, princess alexandra of kent um we have uh the little um sweet pea flower or sweet peas that I planted that will flower and they'll be kind of crimson um and ideally they will vine their way up this trellis um 
And uh, we go around the other side. I've got a, a rosemary. Um, and then I put these cages here because I have dahlia bulbs that um, are planted here that will ideally sprout sometime when they get around to it. Um, this is uh, my tea camellia, um, which is where tea actually comes from. I have tried to grow this before and it didn't do so hot. And I'm wondering if it's doing the same thing again. I may want to prune it and see if it gets any new growth. Um, and then we've um, got good old fish pot here. Just chilling out. Has some parsley and some pansies in it. Um, I think bunnies have been coming and eating my pansies. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, then um, this beautiful stunner is a uh, hookara. It's a, uh, come on, focus on how pretty it is. Focus, thank you. Um, so yeah, it's kind of, it's also another ground cover perennial plant um, that will shoot up cute little pink flowers. Um, they're colloquially known as coral bells, um, which you can kind of, uh, you can see why when you look at the flowers. When you look at the, thank you. Um, and then I've got this thing called betony that's over here. I have no idea what it looks like when it's fully grown. Um, I've got a ton of little weed seeds just germinating. Um, here's the phenomenal lavender I was telling you about um, that apparently is bred to, for Georgia. I keep it in a terracotta pot because I was unsure of planting it in ground and how it would be, um, but terracotta will um, usually helps uh, keep things a bit on the drier side, which lavender usually likes. So trying to, trying to you know, keep her happy. Um, got my, my peonies coming up. Um, I learned that in, uh, they don't usually like, uh, soil in Georgia or like in the, if you plant things, if you plant peonies in the Southeast, uh, you gotta plant it kind of not very deeply, uh, because they don't care for, um, or the ground is warm enough. Um, so I, uh, focus, uh, I just kind of planted it and basically like sprinkled some dirt on top and then put mulch uh and so it seems to be going pretty good like that's a ton of new growth um it's a lot taller than i expected um and funny enough uh quick aside so these are arrows that um because we have a bow and arrows and years ago uh we would shoot in the backyard the um there's actually over here, that pile of mulch, that's actually mulch that's covering the giant target that, um, that we shoot at. Um, but while I was digging and planting the delphiniums and the foxgloves and everything, I actually found these buried under a bunch of dirt because I was like, what the hell is that? I thought it was roots or something. And then I, I pulled out two arrows. Um, so I am, uh, they're in there to remind me that there's a peony in there. And, um, and then I am, uh, I think in order to, cause you do have to stake them in some fashion. So I'm going to use them as stakes. So, uh, because I found them <laughs> in that area, uh, which is pretty funny to me. These are, um, these are some new things that I, uh, I need to plant. Um, this is a dwarf mulberry tree. Um, and I think they kind of grow in more of a shrub-like uh, situation. Oh, and it's got flowers. Well, that looks like flowers to me. Pretty sure that's flowers. Hold up. Yeah. Everything's going according to plan there. Um, mulberries are super neat. Um, they're really tasty too. Um, this big guy is, um, a service berry, um, which is also another native berry. 
um, and uh, I've um, I ate them. I ate some in uh, Montana or Wyoming, one of the two. When we were in Yellowstone, um, and they were so tasty. And Delilah loved them, so I was really excited to get um, a plant of my own. Um, these are also um, some more of those uh, coral bells, the hookara. They're just in different cultivars. So this is this is a darker one. Well, I think it shoots up. It might. I don't know if they're pink flowers or white flowers, um, but they just have different color foliage. Um, and I got you know repeat rosemary and lavender that eventually when I get to it I'm gonna plant by my mailbox. Um, and then this is technically a weed but it was one of the biggest ones I've seen and it's uh it is actually a, a native geranium um but I pulled it out of one of the properties I was working at <laughs> just took it home to see uh like I was gonna put it in a pot and see what it does as far as like you know a weed is if it has anything pretty to it um this giant stick that I have no idea if it's alive um I mean, I could, okay. So, but what I'm doing now, the, I just learned the other day from one of my bosses is uh, if you scrape the bark and it's green underneath, then it's alive. Uh, this is not looking so hot. I think I just donated money to Ace Hardware. Well, that's a bummer. Let's see if this one is. Oh no, that's all dead skis. Cool. I love, I love that. I'm glad it was only five bucks. Shit. Um, well, moving on from that sadness. Uh, my azaleas are going crazy over here. Um, these are just the ones that came with the house. Uh, and then I got the dogwoods are starting to bloom. Which honestly is, it's somewhat between a little early and on time um it be what it be thanks climate change um this is a uh, something i need to plant um this is a florida anise um it is a, a native perennial shrub that will get super huge but i really like the chartreuse leaves um, and if you, I mean, honestly, any, any flower in contrast with this, it's just so pretty. Like it really, it helps everything pop. Um, I got a bunch of new growth on my hydrangea. Got to cut off the old flowers when I get around to it. Um, here's the hot mess side of, uh, where I've currently been working. Um, let's see, I've got... My Edgeworthia, all the flowers are done and it's now putting out new growth. Um, and uh, you'll see a lot more of these when I get to the front of the house. But this is one of the um, irises that um, I got. There was a uh, at the Candler Park uh, Holiday Market or Fall Festival in Nicole's neighborhood. Um, uh, folks from the Land Trust were selling these and i've planted them and they've kind of colonized all over uh the yard so you can see like these are, these are irises that's iris 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 and uh yeah well uh there's a lot more of that in the front um here's what i did with our old water heater um i figured that the because uh, I didn't know what the hell I'm going to do with it. So it's just been sitting on its side over here. So I've used it as a berm. Um, but I figured like the white will help uh, bounce light um, to the other side of uh, the plants. So I've got a couple of um, hookahs right there and there. Um, this is um, Gateria procumbens, uh, winterberry, wintergreen berry. Uh, it usually it will have either um i've usually seen them with red berries this one came with white but if you've ever eaten winter fresh gum that is the berry that it comes from um 
and uh, it's like a low growing brown cover berry. Uh, but I've seen them used in, um, I remember seeing some in a planter in Seattle and they had berries on them. And so I got to eat, I was like, oh, I know what that is. I got to forage and, you know, urban foraging. Um, it was really cool because I also, um, I saw them at uh, Pike Nursery when I was there with my, uh, with uh, Tina and Rachel, my coworkers, and um, I got to pick some of the berries and hand it to them and be like, put this in your mouth. <laughs> and uh, so that was cool. I got to kind of blow their minds a little bit. Um, this is uh, a stilby, which will, you can see the, the tag. It will shoot up these big fluffy plumes of pink sometime. Um, I actually planted it a little um, back where the Edgeworthy and the irises were, but one doing too hot, so I moved it. Um, and it seems to really like it over here. So that'll be great. Um, and then I've got uh, the one hellebore that I have. Um, and everything's covered in pollen. Um, yeah, that's starting. Uh, it's, it's a very sinusy time of year. Um, and this is, uh, these are the flowers that it will produce probably next year because it didn't produce any this year, um, but it was still pretty young. I think it was getting itself established and now it's just popping out new growth. Um, Cause I'm also like, you know, through my job, I'm learning how to take care of things and how to properly prune stuff. Um, so, um, and then I learned actually that these are not, um, these are not petals. They're um... sepals. The correct term is sepals, which are the little, usually when you look at flowers, there's little green parts that are beneath the petals, which kind of keeps the whole flower itself together. In this case, these sepals that look like petals are actually there to keep all of the little bit uh all the pollen and stuff uh, all the little anthers little yellow bits together as a flower uh this is this globe i was trying to this was a pineapple sage that i i've heard it's perennial i've been told it's perennial um, or it's either pineapple sage or melon sage, one of the two. There's two. Uh, this is this globe. I was trying to. This was a pineapple sage that I. I've heard it's perennial. I've been told it's perennial. Um, or it's either pineapple sage or melon sage, one of the two. There's two types uh, that they produce. They get really big and they produce red flowers. And the leaves, if you crush them, they will either smell like pineapple or like um, or like a cantaloupe. Um, but it definitely we had a six like we had 16 degree days, uh, or it was like the lowest we got to was 16, and that knocked out a lot of things that I have. Um, so I was trying to uh, hoping against hope uh, bring it back to life, but. I don't think we can resuscitate that bitch. So let's just enjoy the flowers that we do have. So we got some more of the coral bells and they're just so pretty and so cute. Um, this was a knockout rose that I got at Ace Hardware for like 20 bucks. And it will send, um, it'll uh, have orange flowers uh, where it has nothing now. Um, let's see. Uh, this is kind of, uh, I got my uh, gardenia that uh, came from Miss Tracy uh, from cuttings. I had, I got a long stalk, like just pruned off a branch, cut it into four pieces and put it and, cu and put those four pieces throughout the yard to see where it would grow best. And um, this, this is the south side of the house. Um, so it gets all the sun and then it's like this also reflects a good bit of light um so it seems to be happiest here um i have also recently pruned it again to try and get other branches to form um and i've put the like i put some of the prunings in the ground there to see if they'll root 
um, which I guess I can't remember when I did it. So let's see if, uh, oh, oh, eh, nothing's going. And, eh, that one's stuck in there pretty good. Okay. Well, maybe I'll have two gardenias. Uh, this is the invasive monstrosity that I have yet to be able to identify, but um, this is where I want to put the peach tree and where I want to um, uh, uh, espalier it against this wall. Um, and there are, there are actually some holes that are already done here and here. There's a, there's a bunch of little things that are around the house that like there's holes there. So I got to, I may already have uh, the hard part done. Uh, this is just stuff composting in place that I dragged over logs and put stuff. Um, my, uh, there's a variegated sage. I can't remember what it's called, but I love the foliage. It's so cool and so trippy and it smells really yummy. Um, I've got lamb's ear that's, uh, this area gets, um, because it gets so much sun, it actually dries out pretty well, uh, which this plant really enjoys. So it's just like a nice dry, sunny spot. Like the, um, it's uh, super soft leaves. Like it feels like a chenille blanket. Um, but uh, it will, um, it will take over. It'll fill in whenever. Um, and it, the flowers that it, it sends up are really, really beautiful. Uh, and there, it, it's in the mint family. So it looks, it's very, it's so, it's trippy to me because it looks like any other flower in the mint family, but there's something about it that's just also completely unique to plant world that I just love. Um, and then coming up over here is my, my bed, my uh, highly prized dumpster dive or pull over the side of the road and rescue it bed frame that um, I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to plant here. Um, but I'm just letting uh, the leaves decompose. Um, but I've got some more creeping Jenny um, and then the clematis or clematis, excuse me. Um, oh, let's see. Yeah, she's slowly but surely putting on new growth. And I'm trying to just train her to go up here because usually uh, clematis will, um, as it naturally vines, it will climb up something, but it's, you got to position it to, you know, here's what you can climb up. So, um, and then beneath her um, is a strawberry begonia. So it's just like a little ground cover that has super cute little leaves. Um, and some, I got... I, I got one plant and then divided it into the corners over here. And then um, just a sedum that I've had for a minute. That's, I I don't know how I ended up having it for so long. It, it just kept living, so, and I've done nothing. Uh, so it thrives off neglect. So I'm gonna, that's why I put it there and then I'm gonna neglect it further because that seems to be what it likes. Um, and then this is, I think this was also, this one's also a lavender. Yeah. And again, it's on the, you know, the super dry side of the house. So it's, it's pretty happy. I just need to clean. Uh, just like anything else in my life, really. Um, I guess, let's see. Let's see if I can go through here. Um, a dead shrub. Well, okay. Not dead. That part's alive. That part's dead. Um, cause I pruned, but I hate them. They're like, they're Korean, uh, uh, boxwoods, uh, which now I'm a little bit less, uh, uh, hateful of boxwoods, but they suck up so much water. Um, got, <laughs> my uh the azaleas that came with the house um there's a bunch of white ones on the side over here and they're all blooming at the same time which is good um 
And then this is this is one of the boxwoods that uh, I actually kind of um, I tried to clean it up and kind of topiary it because uh, I have I gotten uh, an old book again uh, another thing that I'll be like here here you can I'll put the picture um, the text in the book because it's by a Mrs. Paul something something. Um, it's uh, an old gardening book from like the 60s and they mentioned though that in ja and it's all about Japanese gardens um, but they mentioned that the way that they topiary them is to um, mimic looking like clouds and I thought that that was such a lovely idea so um, this thing it's kind of you know it had uh, unruly growth here and here here so I kind of shaved where I could and pruned off a bunch of stuff to kind of give it that you know, three little clouds look, because other than that, I'd, I'd want it gone. Um, I got another different um, Florida Annas. This one's uh, not chartreuse, but it's about to flower. And I have no idea what, I like, I have a vague idea of what the flowers look like, but also no idea. So that color, I, I you know, with this rain, and stuff i give it a couple of days and it'll bloom and i gotta come back out here and take a look but it's got a bunch of buds on it it's gonna be so pretty um but yeah like these guys get pretty large um so i planted it in front of um the guest room window so ideally it'll provide a little bit of privacy um and and then here here's what i was talking about uh my irises. Uh, you think I have enough? Um, cause <laughs> I am so actually, I'm honestly absolutely fucking chuffed as nuts that this is happening. Cause when, uh, cause they didn't flower last year. And I think it was just like, they just sent out growth. They ran out through the whole garden, just took over. And all I was seeing was iris leaves everywhere and no flowers and I was so I was so upset because I was like that's why I planted them but now I guess they got really happy and established and, uh, and they're all just going out at the same time and it's so fucking pretty um so I uh I do want to put some other stuff over here but uh now that I know how well they colonize I gotta keep an eye on things um here's another one of the gardenias that I planted and it's not doing as hot and I don't know why um I haven't looked into it as much I do I'm sure that it's soil that I could use some soil testing because a lot of the the leaf discoloration uh indicates to me there might be uh an N an MPK imbalance um so I can look into that or not I could also do nothing uh, which I enjoy doing nothing. Uh, so yeah, more, uh, more white azaleas. Uh, I got, um, this is, oh, my fern's coming back. Um, I moved this fern years ago from way in the backyard. Um, and then it, it also sent out new babies. And there's like a little baby one over there, but... I think by like June or something like that, this place will be crawling with ferns. Um, this is a kind of a grass called a, a chorus. Uh, it came in a big planter that I got from work. Um, or like I, I had gotten a free oleander that I think has since bit the dust, uh, but we shall see. It. And, uh, and you'll see it in a minute. Uh, but it was in the bottom and it's a really good ground cover for uh, wet areas uh, like you can't water it enough so this area because we don't have gutters gets super wet you can tell if I shut up like it it, it, it puddles so something to drink up all of that uh, let's see mountain mulch still doing fine uh, got my super pink azaleas that um, I want to I do want to cut them back a bit 
but I can't right now because they all have flowers on them and I have to wait until those die. So probably in about two weeks, I can come out here and kind of reshape them and then probably give them another haircut uh, at the end of summer. But they are just, they're gonna be so laden with flowers. It's gonna be so beautiful. Uh, got my other clematis climbing up this uh, trellis that I got fairly recently. Um, that one's gonna be a big blue flower, a penned picture. Um, the elderberry is, she's great. She's doing a little too great. I keep having to cut that one back. Um, the uh, My Graham Thomas David Austin Rose that I've had for a couple years now. It was the first rose that I ordered, that I ordered bare root um, against this trellis is just going gangbusters. And I'm hoping for a lot of beautiful yellow flowers that smell so good that I forget about life for a while. Um, and uh, so I'm hoping for a good flush of those. And then just like, like look at that, look at that chartreuse green but like the, the new growth is so vibrant. And then the, it's just so pretty. Like, it's funny, Megan hates on azaleas a lot of the time. And I'm like, I can't see azaleas without thinking about how she's like, God, azaleas suck. They look great for like two days and then they look like shit the rest of the time. And she's absolutely right. But right now they just look really pretty. Um, and I've got some black eyed Susans that will eventually pop up over here. Um, and he, here's my other forsythia that's doing great. Uh, and then I guess I will, I will close with, uh, this is the oleander that I mentioned that um, I did plant a couple days ago. It was rather large and it had a, like the, that freeze kind of killed off a lot of it. Um, and I don't, let's see if it, let's do that test again. Let's, Oh, oh yeah. Now that is a stick in the ground. I planted a stick in the ground. Well, that's a bummer. Luckily, uh, I've put oleanders in my design for one of the, uh, for one of the properties. So I think I'll be able to get one. I just gotta be patient and wait a couple months. So yeah. Um, so this is a, this has been my, my rainy garden video for the start of spring, because what, spring started Tuesday, uh, 19th, and, oh, wait, 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 I forgot, here, I gotta walk down, um, I gotta show you the peach tree I nearly lost, <laughs> here she is. And this was, this part was broken. Burp. And there was another bit that broke off. But for the most part, I mean, like, look, she still kept her blossoms. Like, I'm, I'm thinking it landed butt first. Um, but yeah, I hope, I hope to get fruit off of her at some point. I don't know. Um, She's got to be at least as old as my other ones based on her height and the fact that she's also blossoming because if, if I can encourage you verbally, pear trees, uh, I'm glad to see y'all are leafing out. Um, if we could also see some spurs, some fruiting spurs, I need to read more about fruit trees. This is probably just all ignorance. Uh, it's probably all ignorance's fault. Um, but yeah, pears got new growth. We'll see how they do. I think I need to prune stuff. That is a grape, um, a grapevine that is trailing up it. A grapevine I did not plant. Um, and cause I think if I recall correctly, this is actually, uh, this is a native grape, uh, a muscadine, which uh, they make uh, wine out of. Um, but, uh, and I've, I've eaten, I've eaten 
some of them they don't uh the ones that i've grown don't taste great but and like i don't even know if the birds still eat them um but here's another cleanup project i got to do too these are all thornless blackberries that have just kind of i've let run amok in this area and i gotta actually train the canes up um but hopefully because i've let them grow over a period of two years that i'll actually get some fruit this year and that the birds won't get it before i do uh so um i'll close uh with uh the uh grim sad i guess and uh so like the earnest statue's still doing okay the gardenia that i planted behind it looks great um so uh yeah say hi to Ernest and uh I'll catch you in the next one